Welcome to Make It Plain, the Eric, Key, and Cameron show. On today's show, we will discuss the purpose of life. This should be interesting. Stay and study with us. This podcast is dedicated to addressing various topics from a biblical perspective, coupled with practical solutions for daily application. In essence, we want to take the Bible, which is relevant for all that we need in this life and the one to come, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, and we just want to make it plain. If you'd like to reach out to us and submit questions or comments regarding the show, we love to address those and even use your questions to drive the show content. Our email address is makeitplain, H-A-B-2-2, as in Habakkuk 2-2, um, at gmail.com. Obviously, this is the passage where the Lord told Habakkuk to write on the tables and make them plain. Um, and so in this conversation that we have today, this discussion, we want to talk about the purpose of life. Um, this is always a very interesting uh, conversation to have um, because it has plagued mankind uh, probably from the beginning. I would imagine that maybe Adam and Eve knew what their purpose was in life. Um, but the purpose of life has plagued, man. I, I tell you, I see it when I go to my gym and I go to the restroom and there's a tract in there. It's like, do you know the purpose of life? Or if you see it on television, you know, some religious body will have some kind of infomercial talking about the purpose of life. And then we even hear people who will tell us what their purpose of life is. I believe my purpose of life, I was, you know, like, like Drake said. God's plan, you know. So what is God's plan? What is his purpose for life? Um, that That's a great question and a great consideration because what I've seen it do is pl- not just plague people, but frustrate people. Right. Have you ever seen people get frustrated because they're trying to figure out what is God? What does God want me to do? God, what should I do in life? Well, what should I be? Where should I go? What should my life be like? You ever seen people get frustrated by that? And then, And then, you know, you add to that, in, in that, by that same token, the very people who are trying to find God's purpose to some degree are still comparing, you know, their lives to other people. And, and so, although they may be asking and, and seeking and inquiring, you know, what's God's purpose for their life, in a lot of ways, people still kind of want their lives to mirror the lives of other people that they may, they may you know, look up to or something like that. So, well, that is true. That is true because I see this and I'm, and I'm sure we went through it. As mm. youth, um, but I see it in youth today. It's like it's like everybody wants to have their own identity, but their identity ends up looking like this mass group over here. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Isn't it, isn't it crazy? Because people are like, oh, me wearing my hair like this is self-expression, but there's 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 people who look just like you. Because there's nothing new under the sun. Right. There's nothing new under the right. sun. So you end up do. You do end up conforming to a pattern, right. you know, um, you know, in some regard or another. And we'll we'll talk about that. And, you know, as we go through this, um, go through this, this conversation, if, if it be the Lord's will. But you ever consider bookstores, man? Yes. Bookstores, they line their shelves with self-help, motivation, purpose of life, you know, kind of books. And the Bible has dealt with it. Yeah. And I remember some years ago, maybe early, mid 2000s, um, there was a book um, that was, it was actually a bestseller. Purpose Driven. Uh, Purpose Driven Life. Yeah. And I think it was a follow up Purpose Driven Church. Yeah. Um, and, but it was that, it was centered around that idea of looking for finding and, and sustaining your purpose. Right. Wh- whatever, whatever, you know, whatever that is in your own personal life. But it's that, 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 that driving force that, man, you need to find out what your purpose is, what God's purpose for your life is, and, and, and stay in that lane. Right. Wow. And, and, and that's what, and that's what people are looking for. They're looking for like these very specific purposes, you know, regarding career, mm-hmm. family structure, um, you know, even, you know, religious belief. I mean, you know, they, where, to, they, where, to, where, where, where to stay. Yeah. Where to live, mm-hmm. you know, um, um, how to make their money and their income, you know? And so, um, it's just so many things people are looking for specific individualized answers from God. And then you have these, like I said, you have these bookstores that make these millions of dollars by lining their shelves with things that God has already told us. Uh, like in Proverbs 23, seven, where's a man thinking in his heart? So is he, mm-hmm. you know, the way we think actually matters, but we have 
we have um, uninspired men who write their their views on this stuff and people gobble it up. Yeah. And it's just like, well, God has already dealt with this. And so when people are saying uh, the purpose of life or your purpose in life, people, they run out and they buy all these books and all these literature. When God has told us what our purpose is. It's, it's, it's mind blowing that somebody will go and get some of those help books like that and or to to invest so much time into those things only to be told by somebody else to end up doing something they don't really want to do. Right. Like your purpose end up being <laughs> what what this book, what this author says. And you say, well, you know, I'm going to take this advice. I'm going to go do this. And then you end up doing in a position. It. And now you're like, well, this just don't feel right. You know, because it, it all goes down to a feeling or am I doing this? If you're when a person is searching for something like that, mm -hmm. it's kind of like it's kind of like them also having that inner conscious of telling them, you know, hey, this is this is what you're looking for to get satisfied. But I will say this. I think a lot of people are genuine in what they in their approach and trying to find out, you know, what do I need to do with myself? I can't tell you how many people I see who have the mindset that mm -hmm. they have no purpose. They're worthless. Yeah. They're just here taking up space. Well, I don't believe that God has created anyone worthless. All of us have value. Every human being has value. But again, when you're when you're away from the from the source, you're going to be have a hard time seeing that value. You're going to have a hard time seeing that purpose. Yeah. So I think that people need to have a awakening when it comes to their purpose to realize who they are and whose they are and what they were created for. So often people get themselves caught up in things of the world. And then that can cheapen, she can cheapen us. A person who turns to a life of a, a life of drugs and addiction, or a person who is living a promiscuous lifestyle, a person who is even the successful Fortune 500 person who bears himself in his work, mm -hmm. but then is missing the true purpose right. of what life right. is supposed to be about. And 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 you and, and Key, you just hit right at the core of this of this conversation because what happens is, first of all, every person has value period um you intrinsically. know you, you, intrinsically and right. you and you you know cam you know you you make reference to us being from the south god don't make no jump you know <laughs> and and so um every person has value as a matter of fact the only person that doesn't have value is the one that christ didn't die for it's the only person that doesn't have value and so so we know that every person has value and i think i think he because you because again, I believe that's at the very core of this conversation is purpose, but fulfillment. And I think people feel like I'm I'm unfulfilled because I haven't found my purpose. Right. You know what I'm saying? And see, and I think, and I think that's very natural. I think it's very natural. As a matter of fact, um, as a matter of fact, I think I believe that 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 instinct of inquisition was like put there by God. Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse uh, 11. Um, he hath made everything beautiful in his time. Um, also, he set the world, that Hebrew word is eternity. He set the world in the heart that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Yeah, I heard um, uh, this preacher by the name of Eric Garner say, man oh. has a, a, a God-shaped hole. God-shaped hole. <laughs> that, and, that's, and I think that's Absolutely. what that is. It's Absolutely. a God-shaped hole that because they haven't filled it with God, they haven't found their purpose. Right. And so they think, oh, when I found my purpose, oh, man, you know, I can't recall if we talked about this on some different episode previous, but like soulmate. People are looking for soulmates. Like there's God created one special person in this world just for me. And it's just like, you know, no, you know, I mean, because, you know, you. You 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 have your wife. Let every man have his own wife. You have your own wife. She chooses you. You choose her. You create a life together in Christ prayerfully, um, and you live it that way. But but if you if you if you subscribe to the idea that God has one special person in His life for you, and that if you don't find this person, you won't be fulfilled, then you, like you're going to be in trouble um, if that's the way you're considering. I, I would I would say supplementary to that is. Um, to that is the fact that number one, there is a difference, a major difference between um, existing and living. Well, for sure, you know. And so, if if you you know, a lot of people just exist. You know, they they, they wake up every day, don't have anything to do, they mm -hmm. don't have anything to work for, they don't you know, there's no drive, there's no purpose. Mm -hmm. But when you when you live, 
and, and, and you got a wife, you got children, you got mm-hmm. um, souls that you're trying to reach, you got um, things that you're trying to accomplish, man. That's that that to some degree that's purpose. But when we talk about ultimately God's purpose, which will in, which will in, uh, encompass that, um, and you start thinking about um, living um, God's purpose or a purpose purposeful life. Um, but one of the passages that I think you know we and we'll talk about it. I know um, Ephesians chapter three. Mm-hmm. Paul, when Paul yeah. talk about the church and talk about the 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 the, the importance of the Christian life, um, which he purposed right in Christ, in Christ Jesus, Jesus our Lord, and, and and I don't I don't I think sometimes Christians downplay what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be a member of the Church of Christ. Man, that's that's like the highest thing in life, right? Um, um, and so you know what to be a Christian, man, is 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 that's purpose in and of itself. Oh, for sure. I mean, because it's God's eternal purpose, which Absolutely. he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord before the world ever began, before the foundation of the world was laid, he hid it in Christ, yeah. you know, his eternal purpose. And, you know, this idea of, you know, people being, you know, dead, dead men walking, they, 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 they're, they're existing, mm-hmm. but they're not living. What did Paul say in Ephesians chapter two, verse one? Yeah. And you have he quickened who, who were, were dead, dead in, in trespasses, trespasses and sin. Yeah. Like your life, First Timothy chapter five verse six, uh, Paul said about widows, uh, she that liveth in pleasure is dead yeah, while, while she, she liveth. liveth. Right, you know, so she, so, so she just, you know, living in pleasure, she's existing, but she's not living. We mentioned, I think, Key mentioned earlier about the prodigal son. You know, that was one thing that was said about him. You know, right. this is, you know, this that son, you he know, was, yeah. he was, he was, he was dead, dead <laughs> but he's now alive. But now alive. Yeah. And I, and I think as an ode to key, we gonna look at Jeremiah 29. <laughs> that's a little, that's a little inside joke there. That's a, we gonna get this Jeremiah 29. A, a, <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah, get in here. So, uh, so it's Jeremiah 29, but Keith made a great point. He made a great point from Jeremiah 29. Um, you know, in Jeremiah 29, we know that this is a passage uh, beginning back uh, around verses 10 and following. Um, and even going as back as far as, as, as Cam, you know, when you brought up, you know, make get comfortable. Um, you're, you're going to um, you're going to be here for a while. Um, but in Jeremiah chapter 10, God, God specifies the exact number of years that they were going to be in Babylon in captivity. If and, you, if there, if there was ever an example of God says what he means mm-hmm. and means what he says. Yes. <laughs> or prophecy. <laughs> like if that's ever a confirmation man. of prophecy, man, he said 70. Like, I mean, literally verse number 10 in Jeremiah 29, for thus said the Lord that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and causing you to return to this place. Now, here's where, as we did a previous episode about the prayer of Jabez and how some abuse it and pervert that prayer, some use and abuse and pervert this passage, verse number 11, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you. This is what God is saying to Israel, um, saith the Lord Judah specifically. Um, the, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Now people use this and apply it to themselves, but they, out of context, they don't understand that Jehovah's explaining this to Israel and their purpose. Israel, God had given Judah Israel because the names are interchangeable. Mm -hmm. Like you can always use Israel for Judah. Judah is very specific, um, but you can always use Israel for Judah because Judah came out of Israel. Right, and so and and the and and the Bible does God God does call Judah Israel at times. But for Israel, God's people, chosen people of the Old Testament. So anytime we say Israel, that's what we mean. We may use the word Judah to, to stand for the Southern Kingdom, which is the one that went into Babylon in captivity a hundred years after Assyria had taken Northern Israel. And they, and they, and they didn't learn. And they didn't learn. Right. So from their, from sister, their bre- old, sis- old, older their sister. Older <laughs> sister is what God would say. Yeah. So when we consider Jeremiah, Jeremiah is prophesying to Southern Judah. They're going into captivity. They're going to spend 70 years there. There was an end, though. When you when we consider lamentation and people misquote lamentation three, right? right? Mm-hmm. Like that is a even though Jeremiah lamented this their situation, there was hope. His mercy was new every morning, Amazing. and this is what we see here. I'm going to give you an expected end. They had a purpose. They were going to come out of Babylonian captivity. This is what God had in plan and in store for them. 
They will have thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. Their expected end was not utter destruction. Mm -hmm. That's not what God was going to do to them. He's like, listen, you're going into captivity, but I'm going to bring you out. But what was their purpose? Yeah. I think if we read further, the next two passages, verses 12 and 13, and for those of us, or if there's anyone that has misused this, this passage, we would, we would kind of ask you to go back and, and reconsider this in this context. And notice verses 12 and 13 when we talk about what God's purpose is. Then shall you call upon me, that's what God's purpose is, that they would call upon him, and they would, they, they would go, you shall go and pray unto me. God wanted them to pray to him because what they had, what, who had they been praying to that ended them up in captivity in the first place? Idol, Idol God. gods. That you will pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. God said, I'll listen. I will hear you. Verse number 13, and you shall seek me. That's God's purpose. And find me. That's God's purpose. When you shall search for me with all your heart. That's God's purpose. I and, then, and then look you, at verse 14 too. Verse number 14. Mm-hmm. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. He's not far from every one of us. Isn't that what Paul said? And I will turn away your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again to the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. That was God's expected end. Right. But in order for them to achieve and receive and sustain in this and, and be steadfast in this, like this is it. This is your purpose. This is my purpose for you. I want you to do these things. This is my purpose for your life. Seek me, yeah. Yeah. right? Pray to me. I love you. And, and even, I mean, it just depends on how far you want to go back. Sure. Like, like I think you mentioned about, um, you know, when, we, when you alluded to um, God's eternal purpose. Man, if 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 when you when you start reading the life of Abraham, and God is makes the promise to Abraham. Reiterates to Isaac and Jacob, and he keeps re, you know, um, reemphasizing that and stating that, man. By the time you get to the books of Jeremiah and Isaiah, all those things like that, man, God, as Peter says in Second Peter three nine, the mm -hmm. Lord is not slack concerning His promise. Mm -hmm. God had forgot those things, uh -uh. and so, so He's not going to let them die as right. a nation in in captivity, right? Because He got a greater purpose through the nation of Israel, and ultimately that's to bring Jesus into the world. Egg. Exactly. And it's like, I think sometimes people, they, 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 in, in wanting the personal aspect of it, it's a greater purpose for the nation of Israel. Well, well, you see, Paul, yep. you see, Paul makes that very statement as he quotes Isaiah yep. 64, 4, yes. I think it yes. is. Yeah. And Isaiah uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Yep. As it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither is entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Yeah. This is not, again, a, this idea of my expected end or the prosperity gospel. This is, this was the purpose of Israel to bring the Messiah in, reconciliation of all of mankind with the God of heaven. Paul said, I hadn't seen it, ear hadn't heard it, had entered into the heart. Of man, the, those things, those blessings, that's those spiritual blessings and salvation, which God had for man, those who love Him, but He did reveal them unto us, right. the apostles, by His Spirit. And then, and then their, their their children. By the time you read Romans three and four, mm -hmm. Paul said they right. had the law, right. they had the prophets, right. yep. they had the covenants, they had everything that everything. was necessary for them to to believe everything. that Jesus was the Messiah. Right, and they still missed it. What advantage does it you have every? Every, you had the every, very oracles of God. The you prophets. Had every advantage. Every, everything was lined up for him. It right. was, you know, it, it, it's, I liken it to the fact that when you read First Kings and you think about David as he's getting ready to pass on and he passes it on to Solomon and talks about yep. putting everything together, say it was not a sound of a hammer. Everything was right there. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think he had to do was let play just. Plug and play. Right. Plug it up and just, <laughs> and just, and just go on. Let's just go. That is that is brilliant, man. Yeah. I tell you, it's 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 God's purpose. So so let's so let's talk about it. We've seen it for Israel, and we and we know that we we benefit and we have Absolutely. benefited from their purpose. God had a great purpose for them. Genesis chapter twelve, right? He was going to make a he's you know a great nation um, 
un, un, innumerable. Um, you know, Abraham would be the father of many nations. And so um, that this, this, this messianic prophecy in Genesis chapter three, verse 15, God will put enmity between the woman and her seed and it will bruise his head and, and, and he will bruise his heel talking about Satan and the seed of woman, which being Jesus, that first messianic prophecy, in Genesis three, 15. So what about us? So if, if, if we're talking to people and they're talking to us about the purpose of life, like what will we tell people? Because we've dealt with Jer- Jeremiah 29, how people will abuse that. But how, what will we tell people that their purpose in life is? I will say number one, and then we'll, we'll just discuss it. I will say we, we want to look at Ecclesiastes chap- chapter 12. 12 yes. So in Ecclesiastes 12, and we, and we, and, and our viewing audience, you, you all know the, you all know the passage also. Um, let me get back here to Ecclesiastes 12. And I and, and you no, know, Cameron, you were making a great point about the bookends. Um, how how uh Ecclesiastes 12 is bookend. Right. Um Stars with, with God. God's purpose. Yeah, and Stars, Stars with God, God ends, ends with there. God. But in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, um, verse 13 and, and 14, this has to be one of the most proper conclusions of of any book in the Old Testament. I mean, it lit up, uh, excuse me, in the Bible, it literally ends properly. I mean, you can almost, <laughs> you can almost start with this passage and then start at chapter one. You know what I'm saying? You can almost use this very passage. He says, after everything I've said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Like he literally concluded the book. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. But you know what's interesting though? Uh-huh. So it's all like in chapter one. It's like it's, it's so funny the way it said it, and the way that we can we can we can we can appreciate it. The words of the preacher, right? And, and it's like yeah. like boy, if that's a sermon that that'll preach. You start and then, you get and then we get 12. the conclusion <laughs> as we wrap up, man. <laughs> as I conclude, <laughs> the preacher concluded his sermon, man. man. He said, "Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments. For this, the word is is supplied." For this, the whole, the word duty is applied. For this, the whole of man. You, you, you think you think this was a, a drop the mic moment for Solomon? Man, I'm sure it was. <laughs> I'm sure it was. Yeah, after everything, after everything he had been through, you look everything at everything said and done. Everything that he had seen, he said, you know, it was all vanity, but the one thing that wasn't, you know. Sure. I got a, my, you know, my purpose. I I've had, well, chapter two, he talks about all the things that he experienced to right. try to find happiness. Mm-hmm. Right. All these things he put his hand on. And it's funny, all these things that he put his hands on are things that people think they need today to have purpose to have or be fulfilled. Absolutely. But Absolutely. He learned nothing. But he said it was <laughs> it was all vanity. And I and I'm and I'm I know Sol- Solomon's wealth, many people I you may have point something percent of the people in the world who can say they've done all the things that so- like had multiple riches had all these things, but he said it was vanity. And they still find themselves empty. Empty, still at the end. Empty, vanity. And, 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 the, and vexation it. of the spirit, and by the, the way. And then you think about it, man, like who who better to learn from than the man who, who's, who's experimented with everything. everything? I mean, and he did it, he did it, you know, way before us. And he's still saying, he's still coming back to God. Yeah. Like, man, if that's, that, that doesn't tell you, man, yeah. like, I mean, it's okay to have material things, man, but he keeps telling you it's, that's not where it's at. Right. It, 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 you're going to come up empty every time. As a matter of fact, he, he, in the book, he encourages us to enjoy the fruit of our hands, you yeah. know, but he does make a, um, he does give the young people uh, a verse number uh, one, chapter 11, uh, verse, uh, verse 12. number, no, not chapter 12. Uh, chapter 11, excuse me. Oh, verse 9. Uh, verse number 9. Mm-hmm. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. But know, but know thou, that for <laughs> all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. So many people believe that that should be like the beginning of uh, chapter 12. Yeah. But um, when we consider ch- chapter 12, verse 13 and 14, um, we got we have to fear God and keep His commandments. Um, what does it look like to fear God? Well, this is obviously a reverential fear of God. We want to revere God. Psalm one eleven, you know, not holy and reverent is His name, His authority, His person. You know, holy and reverent is that. 
Um, Proverbs 1 7. I think we talked about the fear of God. Fear the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Yeah. We talked about the fear of God. The fear, the fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. But God doesn't want us, He is a loving Father. Mm -hmm. I don't want my daughters to cower in fear when they see me. However, they do need to know that if I do wrong, dad's going to get me like dad has consequences for if I do wrong. And he's taught me what wrong is. And, and I know the expectation. He knows, I know the expectation. And so if I break those, if I go beyond those, he has some type of consequence. We talk about that terror of the Lord. Second Corinthians 5, 11. Man, second Corinthians 5, 11. The terror of the Lord will persuade me. That, that word is uh, phobia. Phobia. Yeah, for for Bayo. For Bayo. That yeah. that's that is where we get the word phobia yeah. or the fear of, of of stuff. And what did what the did dread. Jesus say? Man. The the just the agonizing. What did Jesus say in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28? Don't fear. Yeah. Don't have a fear of him that can kill the body. Okay, but can't hear the soul. Yeah. But fear him. Now. Yeah. Who can they, kill that both. can destroy both the body and the soul, and soul in hell. Okay. And so there is a terrible aspect of God. That we do need to recognize. Absolutely. And don't become too comfortable. Right. And don't become too, don't become too comfortable with the God of the universe. He still is the God of the universe. He is our loving father. But he still is a God that is absolute in all of his attributes. But one of them being holiness. But, right. But when it also that 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 um that uh, reverence, that respect, um, wouldn't that wouldn't that also be in reference to our approach? To God, like, for like, sure, man. You know, it, it, because it's people, people nowadays, man. Um, our Father in Heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Absolutely, um, man. You got to have a certain level of um, we say we say reverence and respect, but I, I heard a brother say, and I think it was a, a different way of saying it, decorum mm -hmm. about God. Like, yeah. man, we we have to put God in His proper place, man. Yeah. God, God is not down here with us. No. Uh, uh, and and the moment we start thinking that he is, man, you know, our view of him is going to change. It's, it has to. Right. It has to change. Yeah. It has to. Um, so so that's how we that's how we fear God. Number one, reverent, and you know we we do understand that there is a terror, but also to keep his commandments. You know, we fear God and keep his commandments. That's our that's our our goal. That's our our um purpose. And when we keep God's commandments, John 14, 15, 1 John 5, 3, then we prove we love God. Right. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's how we prove we love God. 1 John 5, 3, for this is the love of God. That we keep, that his, we keep his commandments. His commandments. His commandments, commandments not grievous. Right. They're not burdensome. So we prove that we love God. I, I, I say this often. You know, people are like, oh, you, 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 you know, you're keeping law, keeping law. I'm like, listen, okay, you can... You can keep law and not love God, but you cannot love God and not keep law. You're right about like, that. You can't do that. Yeah. You can't divorce love from obedience. You can't do it. Um, because Jesus literally said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Absolutely. They're very quick. They're very simple. And you think about commandments, like these are things that are not optional. Right. These the like commandments, these are the rules. The, this is law. You know, if if whatever Jesus has set in place or whatever he said, it has to be it has to be submitted to. So often I think it goes back to what Eric was just saying. If we don't have a proper view about God and how we should approach him and, you know, it will mess up how we are, our faithfulness and how much we're dedicated. You know, you do have some people who have the mindset that they're only faithful in word. Or sometimes you, we've probably experienced those who attend services and they come, they, they can be at every service, but that's it. You know, there's no, they're not studying. They're not. They're not apt. They're. They're not apt to teach. They're not. Is they've not gone the distance. They kind of want a Jesus light, but you only get a whole Jesus. Yeah. And when we want to, if we're gonna truly keep His commandments, we can't say, man, I'm, I like. I like the part about being with the with the Christians, but I still like this other part. I want to go hang with the world. Listen, they 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 want the baby in the manger, not a king on the throne. Right. Hey. You know. <laughs> That's who they want. Um. When we when we keep God's commandments, we abide in Christ's love. John fifteen ten. When we abide in His commandments, we abide in His love. We abide with the Father. 
This is our purpose. Like this is what God wants from us. It's proof we know him. Yeah. First John chapter two, verse three. We know God when we keep his commandments. And um, you know, one one of the relationships that that God has shown us in scripture that helps us appreciate most of his attributes, I would say that, is is the parent child relationship. It is. So so you know, we have children, uh, we have families, and it's like you give your children laws and consequences and 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 penalties for a reason. So you know you you give them responsibility and you tell them if you do this, you don't do that, whatever there's consequences. But think about God, man. Like there's a reason God gave us laws. Right. Because if it was left up to us, Jeremiah 10 23, yeah. The way of man is not himself. Yeah. Man, we man, we will be so carefree. Genesis 6. Yeah. We'd be so <laughs> carefree, scot free, man, doing whatever, you know. Yeah. But they, there there's boundaries there's there's uh, parameters that right. that God wants us to stay you know stay within and right. it's, on, it's for our best benefit. It is. It, it it helps govern and people say you can't govern morality. Well, I, I beg to differ. Yeah. And we do it all the yeah. time. As a matter of fact, our laws exist to do just that. Yep. Like to do just that, and I'm and I'm not I'm not upset with it. Like I like law. Oh, like, I love it. Know, law of the Lord is perfect. You, converting you, the soul. You know, you talk about the the father the father child relationship. I think also when we look at the the father role period or even like a husband and wife mm -hmm. when it comes to purpose, you know, mm -hmm. you think about what's the purpose, like how how we keep the church populated, how we keep things going. If people, godly people come together, the real children and bring up their children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord like they're supposed to, Ephesians chapter six. And if we continue to do those things that are. That that we're supposed to, you keep the church going for futures for oh, the right. future to come. And again, it's not saying that every child is going to obey the gospel and be there, but you know what? If you if you are trying to sow those right seeds and that that purpose, because again, if you're going to come together as man and woman, you get married, you have a family. If that if you so choose, you're going to have to. Your role as a husband is to give that family to God. You need to be that husband that leads. Mm -hmm. You need to be the one who's submitting to God so that the wife can submit to you so that the children can be in order. It all it all comes together to shape your purpose. You know, I as I have eight children. I look forward to the day of Lord willing being a pawpaw. Not no time right now, but <laughs> I really I look forward to that. And I get to sit back and look and say, man, you know what? My quiver has been full. And look at what look at what now is being produced. Yeah. And I and I hope that it's in a in a, that they continue to, that they will be faithful. I should say, because that's my purpose. My purpose is as a man to show them, hey, this is how you get to God. You can't make it without God. You may prosper in this world and do some things, but if you're not committed to God, if we fail to give our children God, we failed our kids. Well, well, key, man, I think King uh, key, key will never be an empty nester, is he? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, I think I, years ago when um, uh, I think at Policy in the Pulpit, one of the brothers uh, from uh, Last the Leaders, mm -hmm. and they had they had their table, and um, and the book that they had at that particular time was um, "Our Children Will Not Accidentally Become Christians." Right, and it's like the only way they'll ever become Christians is it has to be purposeful. Yep, mm -hmm. and, and that's the only way they're gonna know God. It's the yep. only way they're gonna become Christians. The only way they're gonna be successful in life. Sure, it's not gonna be by accident, man. Nope. It's going to be by intention and purpose. It has to be. Right. Because God has that behind all that he does. Absolutely. Like in movie. And, and so just kind of discussing it. And this kind of drives me to our next point about um, what is our purpose? What is what is the purpose of life? Well, number one, fear God and keep his commandments. That's that's number one. Number two, conform to the image of Christ. Absolutely. And we were talking about patterns, right? Patterns. Like, Can't so what's it. going to happen is. No one will stay idle on the fence. You are going to conform to a pattern, period. It, it, it won't be like you can't stay neutral. Right. I, I heard a sermon by a great gospel preacher say, what gear are you in? By the name <laughs> of Cameron Freeman. What gear are you in? Man. You know, and, 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 and the aspect of being neutral, you know, you can't be in neutral no. because there, there is, I mean, it's dangerous, but Really, you can't like like you literally can't be a neutral because you're going to conform to a pattern as, to, as, something, as, right? as, yeah, to something. As I said, you know, I see this all the time with young people. They want to express their their individuality and I want to express myself. But you end up looking like this group over here. 
you know, you can almost segment them from the athletes to the <laughs> to the thugs to the you know the, the the country boys to you know to the to the um to the goths to the I mean you know it, that's just the way it happens. Right. It, it, you, know, you know what is it called Plinko that they had on a oh, uh, uh, Price, uh, right. Price, Price right, right. Yeah. and and it just ding 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 yeah. you know and they just fall down and they finally settle right. That's just kind that's of what right. happens. Right. You know they settle. You have these little pockets and subgroups and and that's just the way it happens. But everybody's looking for their own individuality and it, and it's it happens to some degree. The same way in every generation. It does. Yeah. In every generation. It, it happens in every generation. And so when we consider Romans 8, 29, Paul said, for whom um, he did for no, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. That is our purpose in life is to be conformed to the right. images uh, of Christ. And that word conform means to take on a pattern. That's literally what it means to take a pattern. Now, it's either going to be with intention or unintentional, right. but it's going to happen. Absolutely. Like you're just not going to sit. We're like, we're not just going to sit neutral and be like, you know what? I'm not going to conform to anyone's pattern. And then you have. Yeah. If that's where you are, then you have. It's kind of like, like you, you know, you know, when you go to the, um, the hotel and they got the continental breakfast or whatever, uh -huh. whatever and they got like the thing you can make the waffles. Uh -huh. So you can take that waffle mix out and you can put it in, in the hot iron and it's going to take the shape. It's going to take the mold of that, uh, waffle, of iron. that waffle iron. Yeah. Or you say, well, you know what? I don't think I want. I don't want that shape. It stay in the bottle. Guess what? Yeah, it's gonna take the shape of, of the, the bottle. bottle. So it's gonna take shape either way. Yeah, it's gonna. But you got to make a decision which shape it's gonna take. You got a great, great yeah. application. Yeah. Great application. Mm -hmm. We 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 will conform to something Absolutely. or some pattern because in First Peter chapter one verse fourteen, if and if you have the if you have the King James, I'm. I'm a King James guy. I'm not a King James only guy. You know, I like the new King James American yeah. Standard. But 1 Peter 1, 14, you notice this word that, that Peter used are fashioning uh, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves yeah. um, according to the form of lust in your, uh, in your ignorance. That word fashioning is the, it's the exact same word that Paul used in Romans 12, 1 and 2. I was just about to say, boy, that sounds like Romans 12. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Yeah, conform. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is a good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That word fashioning in First Peter one fourteen, and the word conformed in in Romans twelve two, same word. And and and, and in Romans twelve, he talked about that you know that which is good and perfect and holy. Mm -hmm. Peter mentioned in the next verses. Yes, be holy. Yeah, why? Because, because I'm holy, holy. right? Yeah, it is written, "Be yeah. be holy, for I'm holy." Yeah, yeah. And that that is the pattern. Yep, that is the conforming that we are to seek. And when I talk about what is my purpose in life, well, okay, I need to conform to something. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen unintentionally, and if it happens unintentionally, it's probably going to be a bad thing. But if I'm intentional with it, as far as, you know, fearing God and keeping his commandments, if I fear God and keep his commandments, the next thing I want to do and understand that God's purpose is, I need to look, operate, think like, be like his son. Because yeah, he's our example. As I, is it is in First Peter, what we're just looking at, it our is. Hoopa Gramos, yeah. our, our example. First, Absolutely. First Peter that's, too. That's, yeah. that's who we need to, that's who we, how we, who we have to imitate and what our lives should conform to. But again, it goes back to the the saying of you you say that you get the baby they want baby baby Jesus, but they don't want they don't want they, King they Jesus. They don't want King Jesus. Right. right. They don't want Lord. They want baby in the manger. They don't want Lord and King. And but but you gotta conform to something. And that's that's what God's purpose is for us in this life. Like he wants us to conform to Christ. So if I ask myself, well, what well, what does that look like? This is where the gospels are huge. Yeah. Because you see Christ. In everyday life, walking in the flesh of a human, like you see it, it's not, it's not something that can sometimes become very abstract as you read the epistles. You know what I'm saying? Because, man, you know, when Paul, when Paul starts talking about the glorified state and nature of Christ and man, that stuff can be like. Because, because, because you. I mean, we understand. I mean, we can't see it, but like right. your mind's eye, yeah, it's still kind of hard to fathom, right? But you can envision, yeah, Jesus in the temple, man. You can envision him in the house teaching or eating. Yes, you can. You can envision him with the adulterous woman, right? You can envision him with his disciples. You can see him get get a little frustrated with them, 
Have I not been so long a time with you and yet thou has not known me, Philip? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can hear the frustration in right. his voice. Like, God, you ain't learned nothing in three and a half years. <laughs> like, I mean, you can, you can hear the frustration in his voice. Have I been so long a time with you and yet has thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. How says thou then? <laughs> Show us the Father. father. You know, man, what what are we doing? I can man. imagine this. Well, how how you fix your mouth to even say to me, man. show us the father. You've seen him. Right. For three and a half man. years, you've seen him. If you've seen me. Right. If you've seen me, you've seen him. Right. And so the idea of conforming, it 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 is gonna happen. But what is that image of Christ? Man, you know, we quote a lot as a preacher. I'm guilty. Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Right. right. Mm-hmm. I quote that often. I've done a better job of quoting three through five. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better Better than than himself. himself. Look not every man on the things of his own, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And so what will be the manifestation of that mind? Oh, I will humble myself. Yep. I'll be obedient. I'll be a servant. I'll be a servant. Right. You know, when I, when I, when I, when I, when I'm not doing things through strife or vainglory, but I have a lowly mind and I esteem other better than myself, I'll become a servant. Right. I will not seek my own. I will um, be obedient. I will be humble. And, and, and in Philippians 2, I won't murmur. I yeah, going, I won't, going further man, down. You could just I'll walk work through, out my own salvation. Man, you could just walk down through that text, you, man. You uh, can, man. I mean, these are manifestations of the mind of Christ. Right. And, and often, again, I've been guilty of quoting simply verses five through eight. But what does that mind look like? And so when we, when we talk about conforming to the image of Christ, I think that's what it looks like. Yeah. You know, it's, I, I, I love the fact Cam threw that in the, the, the additional with no murmurs or complainings, you know, because. It's I'm a I'm a I'm a say it's I'm a I'm a say it and I correct myself on the back end. I often find myself saying it's not easy to be a Christian because the things that we have to do that make us make Christ like because man everybody's not always lovable because they're opposed to the flesh. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. They're opposed yeah. to what we want, you know, naturally want to do. Yes, it, and it's hard because again, when somebody if somebody's mean to me, my natural the natural of mankind is to. Go eye for an eye. Right. But again, that's why Jesus came and said, hey, it's no longer eye for an eye, two for two. Guess what? You have to love. You have to Man. forgive. And that's and when I say that is hard for some people now, I will say this. It is. I know I'm petty. I am like, I, I'm talking about <laughs> cap, capital P, capital E. Hey, hey Key. I, I, yesterday, somebody, <laughs> they, I think they was, they was the, uh, the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And they were talking about uh, the Lakers or something like that. And, and, and Shaq, I mean, Charles Walk had already written them all. And they said, man, you petty LaBelle. <laughs> <laughs> petty LaBelle. <laughs> Look, and, I, and, I, you know, and, and again, it's, it's an awareness about self. So I, I have to catch myself often because I know I know I can go too far. Right. Yeah. And then that's the thing about it. I want I want to be Christ like in what I do. So I want to make sure that I'm putting a good put my good foot forward and I'm actually doing more to be a light than right. to be a or dis or detractor or discourager from what people need to see. But you know, but you know by, by way of observation, you just you just did and said something that I think people sh- should really catch on. You are conscious of being petty. Right. You know, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, so you know that's that's one of your 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 thing quirks yeah. about you well, that you makes know, you that sin that does so easily but sin us <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but the fact that you know that about you you're not trying to hide it you're not trying to be in denial about it but you know that when that that inclination that that temptation that urge kind of creeps in your mind like no man I'm trying to be, yeah deal with that right yeah, I got, I'm trying to be an example of Christ I'm yeah. trying to be the light of Christ so I can't I can't display that that pettiness well let me bring my thoughts into captivity absolutely yeah, that's right? what bring every thought into captivity because i'm i'm with you key man it's 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 it when you deal with people is it like when you you as a and us three preachers you and i work in the public right you right. you how many students you have what two thousand what 1800 1800 students mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> then then you, you got a faculty and teachers substitutes this, that, that. So parents, parents. I've, so when you, when you, when you done, you have so many personalities you have to work with. Me, me the same way. Like I'm every every week I'm getting somebody new. I'm getting added on, and so it's again I want to make sure because I am seeing that many people 
I want to be able to be positive. I want to make sure that, okay, to show them, like you said something negative to me, I don't have to respond back. Right. I think I was sharing with you guys, one of the young men who I was working with um, just as of recently who came in the mm-hmm. state, he's, he's one day from finishing off where he would be done. He could just go, go free. He got in trouble. He ended up getting two, he ended up getting a disorderly conduct charge and then got another one two weeks later. And so he had to be taken. He uh, he's going to be taken away. And he was just very, very not into, not into talking, threatening, had background was just horrible of what he's been through. And I understand his background. And I say, you know what? I want to be there for this young man. And so I stuck it out. I, I, I removed all my pettiness aside because I have people, kids I see sometimes will tell you, hey, I don't know why you're here. I don't want to talk to you. But I, it was a great reward for me to see at the end when he turned to me and said, I thank you, Mr. Keith, for not giving up on me like everybody else did. Right. right. You know, that was the mo- I was able to maintain mm-hmm. being Christ-like despite all the things that happened. And it was very rewarding to hear him say that. Well, you know, I and and that's that that is, you know, I think you brought up first Peter two twenty one mm-hmm. and about Christ being our example, you know, being in a position of leadership, man, I have. You know, I have to manage adults and it is so interesting, man, when you're dealing with like some teachers because they're just adults, you know, the things they were crucified students for the same stuff they do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like if, if the student doesn't, doesn't, um, you know, engage their communication, like if they sent the students emails or stuff like that, and then the student acts like they didn't know, I don't know. Well, why didn't you know? I sent you emails. I had it, I had it written on the board. I could say the very same thing about a lot of them teachers. Like, how did you not know? We sent you as a from administration, you know, so, so, but I have to know that I cannot match you know, I can't match fire, fire. their energy. I have mm-hmm. to, I have to always be above the fray because of my integrity. And I mean, I think being petty is a natural thing. I think we all just want to be it. That's why I stay, that's why I stay off social media, man. Because I tell you, man, it can, you can, you can get very petty real quick behind a keyboard because, um, you know, on social media, man, you can say God is good and somebody's going to be like, but, you know, it's just like, it's a- Good Always grief. I mean, right. you you can't say anything without somebody opposing it right. somehow, some way. Um, you know, you because I can, I don't have the time to be like, God is good. But yes, I do know he's severe and I do understand he did this. I don't have time to expound right. on all of that. And that wasn't my that wasn't my intention. That wasn't but, my intent, right. but but somebody's gonna have a problem with it. Absolutely. Like you can say, you can say I mean, no matter what you say, somebody's gonna have something to say about it. I, I think you know, it should we should also mention too, like. So when we talk about being Christians, that does not remove the 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 natural human inclinations right. to to sometimes do what yeah. what we you know would ordinarily don't want to do. Got to mortify them. Absolutely, we got to you know we got to renew daily. You know we got to. And so and so when I think about that man, like so now we can we can say this as we we look back and study it. I understand quite well now why Moses smoked that rock. <laughs> Petty. man you Petty. Can, can you imagine man people always question your leadership always. always complaining nagging and it's like there's nothing that you can do to ever appease them or satisfy them right but there are consequences to that pettiness right right, no, right. I mean I, you know yeah. but you can understand but right. but because I, I, we can go to first 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 Peter chapter 2 real quick verse 21 for even here unto where you call because Christ also suffered for us um, leading us an example that you should follow his steps but then I think this speaks to our point. Who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. And so, you know, our, that image of Christ is not to be retaliatory, right. you know, petty, you know, when we want to be, when, when, you've, when you want to say, when they ask you something and you want to say, can you please refer to the 50 previous emails I sent? You know, when you want to say that, right. you just tell them again. Right. You know, I mean, it's, it's, you know, we, we, we stand in these, these shoes as Christians because the word Christian means follower of Christ. Well, you know what? I, I will say, I'm going to add something to that point. You made a very good point there. 
I think we also need to have the mindset that we got to do this with our children as well. Oh, oh absolutely. absolutely. Because I, I see, and that's one of the things about parenting. I see parents will like, well, say, I've told you more than once you shouldn't do that, but then a parent will go and do the same, do the thing. And I, I find that very hypocritical. And, and I, 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 I raise my hand. hand. I raise my hand and say, mm-hmm. you know what? I've noticed this, but I've not done things on the first time I was asked right. on, on, on a certain thing. Now, right. again, how can we expect our children to up, up and jump and do something when we don't, when we don't, when we're not showing the example? Yeah. Well, and that's one of the things from, from, I mean, I know Eric knows this. We know it too. From, from student to teacher, parent to child is modeling. Right. You know, mm-hmm. modeling the behavior that we want. Well, for sure. You know what? Well, you, you can't, you can't expect for a student or a child to do something that you're not willing to model and, and be and do yourself. Christ. Right. Yes. He was the example. Right. He did it. That's why we say the God we serve, this is one reason I love him so. Because number one, he never he he never once hid the imperfections of man. Right. Like not one person. I don't care if it's David, Moses, I don't care who it was, Peter. But he never hid that. He could have God could have kept that from us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But he showed us them in all of their humanity. So number one, I love that because you know what that tells me? That a perfect God can use an imperfect person, person to accomplish his perfect will. Right. So I got hope, you know. We got hope. Now we got hope. <laughs> Secondly, he was, he never has pressed upon me something that he didn't model. You know, we talk about if he asked us to give our lives and sacrifice for him, he did it first. If he asked us to love our enemies, he said, this is how you do it. I'm right. not, I'm not, I'm not saying do as I say, not as I do. That's not the God we serve. He says, do as I do as I do. Like, what did he say? What did Jesus tell the disciples about the Pharisees? Do right. what they say, but don't do, do what after they that do. works. Right. But God, Christ can say, do what I do. Like, do as I do. And that's the beautiful thing about it. If I ever question, you know, when we have this, this, this idea about what would Jesus do, I don't have to ask that. I can ask, what did Jesus do by looking in the gospel accounts and watching him interact with those who would kill him? And when, and when you read this man, you know, obviously Peter didn't cover the totality. But right. when you go back and read like John 19, mm-hmm. the things that happened to him before he went to the cross. Right. Man, John 19 shows, man, he was spit upon. Mm-hmm. He was slapped. Slapped. Punched. Mocked. Mocked. They, they platted a crown of thorns. Scourged. Uh, and he still went to the cross. Still went. Hebrews 12, and 2 says, for them. Uh, uh, who for the joy that was set before, was set before him, him endured the cross. Despised the, the shame. shame. Sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. We would talk about, number one, fear God and keep his commandments. But number two. Be conformed to the image of Christ. That is our purpose. Our purpose is not buy and sell and get gain. Yeah. It's not. It's not. Let, let, don't go into a city and say, I'm going to do such as this and buy and sell. What you need to say is if the Lord will. Yeah, but because again, the, yeah, again the, nothing, wrong with, nothing wrong with doing that. Nothing wrong the, with buying and selling and getting gain, but that's not your purpose in life because those treasures will burn up. Absolutely. We know that. Like they, They're going to burn up with everything else. And so finally, with the remainder of our time, our third, you know, the third way we can see our purpose that God has for us is that we are to glorify God. So fear God, keep his commandments, conform to the image of his son. But our life should be one that brings Absolutely. honor and glory to God. Got to be a light. Our, our life, our life glorifies God. It sets God on the pinnacle. Right. Like our life. Like that's what we do. We we glorify God. In First Corinthians chapter six, uh, verse verse twenty, um, Paul discusses this idea of glorifying God. Um, let me get back here real quick. Um, well, I read it while you not, find it, but not in um, for you are bought with a mm-hmm. price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now, this is not this is not w- w- which would apply. First Corinthians ten thirty one. But Paul says, you're bought with a price. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit because they belong to God. So, so the things that I do, my speech, my actions, my thoughts, my attitude, my attitude, all of it should bring glory to God. Now, glory. in the context of you know, meat sacrifice to idols and those kind of things, Paul was saying, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, 
know, whether you eat or drink, whatsoever you do, do all to the, the glory, glory of God. God. You know, but still, it applies. Absolutely. Yeah. It still applies. Whatever. When would that not apply? When would somebody say, well, I mean, contextually, you know, when, when would we, when would we contextualize that, that right. application away? Well, you know, contextually, I don't, I don't have to glorify God in everything I do. Oh, like, oh, 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 now you want to be an exegete. <laughs> <laughs> now you want to know something. Now you want to Now you want to Now you want to exegete the <laughs> but, 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 yeah, but, so when would this not apply? Man. Yes. Yeah, but what, whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus by his authority, but 1031, bring glory and honor Man. to God. And that's shown through doing good works, isn't it? Absolutely. Matthew 5. Uh, Matthew 5, 16. Right. Yeah. Um, Ephesians 2, 10. For but we are his work, Monsieur. Created, created in Christ, Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus unto good, good works, works, which God has before Lord ordained Dane. that we should walk. walk. There you have it. Continual practice. There, a, a, a continuing practice that you shall walk. And that word is peripatao it's, in the Greek. It's conduct of life. Right. Your okay. manner of life, the way you walk is your manner of life. And so we do that in a way that brings glory and honor to God. Man, you want to you close the season out? Do we, do we have a big plan to blow the horns? Or uh, well, the listen, I don't, or? I don't know that we're blowing. <laughs> I don't know we're blowing trumpets or anything. That, this, this will conclude it. You know, we'll, I don't know that we have a... We, we don't want to leave them hanging in the balance again. Well, They'll be ready to kill us. So, you well, know, we get all the we get all the emails where, where we at. They put out APB on us and be looking for us. Well, let me well, let me look at a one more passage. All right, go ahead. one more passage. Uh, Isaiah forty three seven. I want to look at this one real quick. Um, even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I formed him. Yea, I have made him. We are to glorify God. That is our purpose. Our purpose in this life is to glorify God. And if I can go ahead and attach this one, Cam, because I think you brought up Ephesians 3, you're talking about his eternal purpose. Right. But the only way we can do that as we conclude this lesson is through the church. Ephesians 3, 20, 21. God is only glorified in his church. Yep. He's only glorified in his body. So how do we how do we fulfill God's purpose in us in our life? Well, for our life, number one, fear Him, keep His commandments. Number two, um, be conformed to the image of His Son, and number three, bring glory to Him in all that we do. Well, we're we're done, fellas. Season three wrapped up. We appreciate our audience for hanging in there with us for another season, and prayerfully, we'll come out the gate with season four um, as soon as we can. But if you guys would like to contact us, reach out to us, submit questions, comments regarding the show. We love to address those. Use that shit. Use those questions and comments to drive season four. Uh, get us into season four. I, I guess they'll renew us for another contract um, so we can get our royalties. So, you know, we'll be looking for that check to come in the mail. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but our email address is make it plain, hab22 at gmail.com. May God bless you and keep you as you seek to conform your will to his. <laughs>